tonight on Sports Saturday. It's Mother's Day weekend, and we're giving Mom all the sports she can handle. Could the Tide send Auburn baseball back to their room, or would the Tigers get the last laugh? Ah! Wait a minute, SpongeBob. We'll get to you in a minute. Plus, the newest NFL rookies are testing out their sea legs at camp. Could Blake Sims impress the Packers at quarterback? Yo, Adrian, you're there too, right? I was working and trying to get better. All right. And the Sprint Cup guys are in Kansas under the lights at the SpongeBob SquarePants 400. I'm ready! You heard me right. Is this Sports Saturday? No, this is Patrick. No, this is. Oh, thank God we have another game. And that's Avery. Nice try, but we still see you, coach. The gang's all here, so get ready, because we start right now. What a Saturday. Avery Johnson was out and about in Tuscaloosa enjoying that warm, warm weather. He tried to hide from Jen Chapman's prying eye, but Jen got him. <laughs> Coach was supporting the Alabama tennis team today. We'll show you highlights and give you the results of the team's match against Clemson a little bit later in the show. With that, we say welcome in everybody to Sports Saturday. I'm BJ, she's Jen, and Jen, there was a very important baseball series taking place this weekend down on the Plains. Game two between Alabama and Auburn, the Tide trying to stay in contention for the SEC baseball tournament. A big seventh inning for the Crimson Tide, down one when freshman Cody Henry sends an RBI double out to left field. Some hustle around the bases from Casey Houston and Kyle Overstreet all the way from first base. And then that gives them all something to cheer about. Chance Vincent slaps ones out to right, brings home Henry. The Tide go up 5-3, to three, but a scary moment in the bottom of the seventh. Pop-up results in a collision for Alabama. Vincent was laid out, and medical staff immediately waved in. The Tide in prayer over Vincent before he gives the thumbs up and is taken away by ambulance. His mom saying on Twitter he's stable and watched the remainder of the game on TV at the hospital. After the Tigers tie it up, Alabama's Georgie Salem with a huge triple to right. Chandler Avent scores and the Tide go on to win 7-6. to six. So with that and last night's 4-2 to two win, Alabama takes the series but will go for the clean sweep tomorrow at 1 p.m. The deciding game three in high school playoffs. Gordo and Geneva, top of the third. Geneva up two to one. When Jameson Ronnie adds to that, he blasts this two run shot over the wall in left field. The Panthers led four to one. On to the fourth. Gordo trying to get something going. Coy Chapman sends a chopper to short. The throw gets away, allowing a run to come across. But it wasn't meant to be for Gordo. Logan Kelly strikes out to sw swinging to end the game and the season. Geneva wins five. To two. So the postseason winding down in high school and beginning to wind up in college softball. The SEC tournament over for Bama, but they had the title game tonight. That's right. The Auburn Tigers had a shot for their very first tournament title against the Tennessee Volunteers. Tennessee's last tournament title came in 2011. Auburn up three zip, but the balls come right back. It's Taylor Caning sneaking this one past the shortstop into left field. The orange getting red, as in red hot. Then in the fifth, still down three to one, when a costly throwing error is going to bite the Tigers. Going for the double play, but Fagan's throw cannot be handled. The Vols take a four to three lead. But you know what? Auburn is tough. They're resilient, Jen. In the seventh, they bounce back. Carly Wallace with the routine fly ball, right? Routine? Wrong. Oops. Casey Cooper comes in to score. We are tied at five, and they are in extra innings as we speak. An update on who won that game tomorrow on Sports Sunday. We'll find out where the tide goes tomorrow as well at 9 p.m. That's when the NCAA selection show will air on ESPN2. All the spring sports winding down since summer's right around the corner. The Alabama women's tennis team in action in the NCAA tournament. They were hosting Clemson in the second round today over at the tennis complex. The number one doubles team in the country and defending NCAA champs Maya Jansen and Aaron Rutliff left cheering for their teammates after falling to number four ranked doubles team from Clemson. The Crimson Tide unable to grab the doubles point victory despite hard fought contest in both of the other matches. As for the single matches, 34th ranked Aaron Rutliff beat her 36th ranked opponent in convincing fashion, six to four in set one and six to zip in set two. In the number five singles matchup, Bama's Emily Zaber won in two sets, both by six to two, but those the only singles winners for the Tide as they fall to Clemson 
four to two. And with the win, Clemson advances to the Sweet 16 for the tenth time in the last 12 seasons. As Alabama, the individual and singles and doubles championships will begin May 20th. So still a chance for the Tide to bring home some more tennis hardware this season. That's right. And still a chance for you to watch more Sports Saturday coming up. Next, we're going to take you around NFL rookie camps. Two former Crimson Tide stars stood out today. We're going to tell you who and hear from a couple of former Alabama stars. Stick around. Sports Saturday returns after the break. Back on Sports Saturday, Blake Sims had his big tryout with the Green Bay Packers yesterday and today. Head coach Mike McCarthy told reporters that Blake did some nice things and they'll make a decision on whether he'll be signed to the 90-man roster over the weekend. He did say there was a chance he could be evaluated at a different position. We are all pulling for Blake on That's that right. one. Go Pack Go. About half the teams in the league held three-day rookie camps this weekend, but it's not just the drafted and undrafted free agents that are participating. Yeah, like for instance, at Packers camp, former Crimson Tide star Adrian Hubbard got a chance to make an impression, even though he's in his second year. Another guy making a huge impression, TJ Yeldon. And he was the talk of the workout today for the Jacksonville Jaguars. He looked quick and made several big runs, as you can see there. Yeldon hasn't shown any signs of some of the nagging injuries he suffered in his junior year at Alabama, and he's making a big impression with his head coach. Yeah, Yeldon did again. You know, he did a nice job. You know, some of the runs that he had. I thought, you know, to come out the second day like this and practice, the intensity sometimes slows up, but the guys did a good job. The fourth overall pick in the draft, Amari Cooper, also getting acclimated to his full-time job in pro football with the Oakland Raiders. And if there's one thing we know about Amari, it's that he doesn't really like to talk to the media very much. As a matter of fact, he's a man of few words, something the Oakland media found out today. We play Count the Questions, the first being about his number change from 19 to 89. <laughs> Not really. I just I thought it would look better on me than 19. Why? I really can't even say why. <laughs> it just looks like a better number. <laughs> yeah. How does practice, you know, just a rookie minicamp, right? how does this practice compare to how practices are run in Alabama? Is it a lot different? Is it? It's a, it's a lot shorter. Mm -hmm. It's a lot shorter. Why was it uh, important for you to uh, get your contract signed and get all that out of the way so early? Um. Well, my agent advised me to do that, so I guess it was important to uh, to him, and I guess it was a smart thing to do. Have you met uh, Coach Del Rio back in Alabama with his son being a quarterback there for the one year? No, I haven't met him. A man of few words at Amari Cooper. The New York Giants have been breaking in their rookies as well. That means Alabama's Landon Collins, the second round pick who fell out of the first round, but he's tired of talking about that. He's just ready to be back on the field. He discussed how good it felt to strap up the helmet again. Fantastic. I mean, the biggest part of me is being on the field again, um, being with some guys and playing football, which, which you've been waiting for your whole life, you know, and it's just a fantastic moment. Uh, I'm gonna just, that's all on them. I mean, yeah. I gotta, gotta work my way up into the depth chart and um, continue playing my best. Congratulations to those guys. More Sports Saturday coming up next, including a couple of walk offs you're gonna wanna see. Stay with us. Back on Sports Saturday, Sprint Cup in Kansas tonight for the SpongeBob SquarePants 400. That's right, so we're gonna have some help <laughs> doing these highlights. So come on in, guys. Well, hi guys, I'm gonna do the highlights here. Look, they're, they're, they're sliding all over the course. I don't know what's going on out there. It's, it's like they're underwater. I drive in water all the time. What's the problem? Patrick, what about you? Oh, I don't know. I, I think they're, they're getting wet out there. What's going on? All right, guys, I get out of here. It, as you see, it was uh, delayed a little bit by rain in Kansas. Uh, they're currently still racing. SpongeBob, Patrick. They did a Good great job. job on Sports Saturday. Exactly. <laughs> Welcome to the team. <laughs> Some other stuff going on today, like golf, the Players' Championship out at TPC Sawgrass. That's right. Some guys had a great time on the course today. Others, not so much. We start with one of those, Eldrick Woods, better known as Tiger. Tiger. Oh, yep. He had a horrible round today. He shoots three over, dropping him way out of contention. But you got to give it up for former Bama golfer Justin Thomas, a blistering seven under 65 today. He sets the Sawgrass record with 10 birdies for the round. He only was two shots off the lead heading into Sunday, so Chris Kirk is your leader at 10 under. That's big time. The first of two Atlanta versus Washington battles in pro sports today. The first baseball. Down two in the eighth. Christian Betancourt ties it up with the gapper to left. That's a double. We're going to the bottom of the ninth. 
Bryce Harper at the dish, a runner on. Oh, walk it off, Bryce Harper with the game-winning two-run homer. He got covered with chocolate sauce after the game. Do you believe that, Jen? And that is his third straight Look at that. game with home runs. There you go. NBA couldn't top this, could they? Oh, yes, they could. To the NBA Eastern <laughs> Conference playoffs, same cities, Atlanta and Washington. Hawks down three with 14 seconds to go. Mike Muscala buries the three-pointer, and so we've got ourselves a tied game. Enter another Washington number 34, uh -oh. and just like Bryce Harper, Paul Pierce in the clutch. A bank shot at the buzzer for Washington win, 103 to 101, the final DC rising. I think that's the oh, hashtag. Bad. Good day for Washington today. You as know, long as the Redskins aren't playing, we are good. <laughs> a lot of bad things come out of Washington sometimes. Those fans get a good look. A little, lot of great well, things no, I'm just saying out. bad things as far as politics stuff. You know, sometimes good stuff. Goes oh. How'd you like my SpongeBob and Fresh Bob? It was fantastic. Especially my past. kids are going to love that. The kids are going to love it. That's it. That's all we got. That's all See we us got. tomorrow night. Sports Sunday tomorrow night. Good Bye. night.